Hi there, and welcome to a new Plugin Guru video. My name is John Skippy Limkul. This is an exciting video for me because I'm introducing you to Mega Macho Drums 1.5. Um, and since it's the Christmas season, this library is on sale. So instead of $149, I have it at the crazy price of $119. So go to PluginGuru.com and pick it up. Uh, it has a serial number, and that serial number allows it to show up in the Libraries tab. And I'm going to briefly show you a little bit about the update for those of you that are updating. And I want to first of all say thank you to everybody that has supported this library since it started in July. This is the fourth update. Uh, revision 1, first release was July 1st. August 15th was the second release with new kits and new patterns. Um, on October 15th, I released more kits and more patterns. So we were up to 300 patterns at that point. In this release, the big thing is right here, the MIDI groove player, and we're now up to 550 plus patterns. And what's really fun is instead of having to go to your computer desktop and rummage through there and drag MIDI files into your sequencer, they all show up right here inside of the player. Not only that, but they will play and they synchronize and you can automate some of these parameters to make really flexible and easy ways to uh, make songs. So when you download the update, it will show up as a zip file. It's about 57 megabytes. It's not the full 900 megabytes like you need when you're buying the library and you download it the first time because it doesn't include the samples. I haven't added any new samples uh, to it. This is just parameters in the script. I would suggest making a backup copy of Mega Macho Drums. Like an easy way to do that is to go to Mega Macho Drums and control click on it and say compress. That way you're backing it up and you're saving a smaller sized memory version of it. If you want, you could actually remove these two items before you do this. Just drag them to your desktop like this. Then go over here and now compress it by control clicking on it and say compress. And now it's only compressing something that's 69 megabytes instead of 900 megabytes. Um, and then once it's compressed that, let it just do its thing. Then you go back to Mega Macho Drums. Take your two sample files. Put them back into the samples folder, right? So after you have copied all this stuff over and replaced it and said yes to replacing everything, then you would go into your samples folder and you take these two things and delete them. Command, delete, move them to the trash. Because inside of here are the two script file resource files that you need to click and drag and put into the samples folder. And after you've done that, you now have a, a backup and you have an updated version of Mega Macho Drums to what I'm calling 1.5. And you can tell if you have Mega Macho Drums 1.5 because when you make sure you don't have your, your sequencer DAW open and running, close that, reopen it, reopen contact, and now when you go to Mega Macho Drums and you load up any of the kits, they all will have built into it. If I say uh, the dubstep kit, boom. They open up to this page default. If you want, you can save it to this page and then save it again and now it'll open up on that page. But I, by default, they open up to this page. And now you have the kits. So conceptually wise, this library has 2,000 samples. It's over 50 some kits that uh, actually there's more than that because in the program kits, I've taken um, these kits here and made all sorts of really cool tricky versions with using all of the parameters that you see on the display here. There's distortion, lo-fi, there's a glitch effect that's really cool. Watch the earlier videos. There's earlier videos on Mega Mantra Drums where I show you all this stuff. I'm just doing a brief overview. And the thing that makes this unique and that makes this work is that all of these kits in the kits drums folder, I designed them so that, let's turn on keyboard. These first five notes are bass drums. From here until A sharp are different snares. And then above that, we start the general MIDI drum map. This is a kit layout that I designed over 15 years ago for the Korg Triton. Uh, general MIDI just become a thing, and we wanted patterns that could follow general MIDI because we needed to play general MIDI songs and stuff like that. But we wanted to have, or I wanted to have more kicks and snares because... You know, the one thing that changes in a song, the hi-hats can stay the same, but if you change from 
that to it's a whole different thing. So I've kept that concept for this library in that that layout, general MIDI up here, and then five extra kicks and seven extra snares here. Um, that makes it so that when we go over here, turn off the keyboard because I'm on a little tiny display. If I go to the to the general MIDI layout and I choose, let's say, uh, let's say pop, and I say select this and play, it plays. And if I say, oh, I want to try psycho hop. This is a whole different drum kit, right? We designed this so that when you go back to the groove player, it stays right where you were at when you were when you when you when you were at your last kit. So it's right there ready to go. So just double click, you'll know that it's loaded when this lights up saying normal. And now you're and if I go, oh I want the vintage, let's go to vintage kit. Load that, go over here and say there and hit play. Off you go, right? All right, so what's cool about this? There's so many parts of this, and we're just discovering. This is something that's kind of, we finalized it in the last week. It just got back from Native Instruments where they went through the finalizing process and sent the final files back to me. And I've played with it some, but I haven't played with it a whole lot. But it's so, so cool. Here's, here's what is really cool about this. Number one, when I hit play on my sequencer, it plays. When I hit stop, it stops. So that means I can have other things. Let's unmute the drummer inside of Logic Pro. And if I go to here and they're playing. This also means, mute him again, because I don't want to hear him per se, that if I have my sequencer playing, right? That information is now in there so that it will keep track of it. I can hide this. I can take Maximus and drag it over here and go to its MIDI groove player. And uh, let's say we go to hip hop. And let's go through the list. There's a whole lot of new patterns. There's tons of new patterns. So not shuffle funk, but let's say, here we go. Now, if I don't start on one, Wherever I start, it's listening to location in the song file from Logic. So let's get that going. Like I said, it's going to get loud. Now, what's fun, go to the parameters and let's take the whole kit. Put delay on everybody. Okay. Maybe let's put distortion on it. Okay. Close this. Let's go to the dubstep kit. This is where it gets really fun. And I gotta scroll down so I can see my groove player. Dub step. You ready? One. If I go to see the tempo, speed it up. It all follows along just like that. Then you have controls here so you can. Okay, so multiple grooves can now be playing together. They all are synchronized to the tempo of your song. You have to have your song playing if you want to hit start and stop and have it play at the right time. But it's killer, killer fun. Okay, there's more to show you. Um, let's get some kind of busy. Okay. In fact, let's go to another kit. Let's play this on Mega Macho. This will be really interesting. Uh, yes, replace. I'm going to go over here to the groove. Double click, play. Maybe I'm going to shorten it up a little bit. So set to global. Okay. Now, check. 
check this out. I was searching around in, in these parameters here. And on the instrument option page, there's a thing called key range. And I played with it and it did something really cool. And I talked to my script designer guy. And I said, dude, I would love to have those sliders on the interface. And the next day we had them on the interface. And not only that, I said, dude, I would like to automate them. And the next day after that, we were automating them. So if I turn off cycle, if I put this into latch mode. Oh, there's also the velocity. Check this out. This is so cool. If you're playing it, as you bring down velocity, the rules of the velocity controls over here take effect. So it's short and punchy when it's soft velocities with the, most of the kits. Longer here, right? I didn't realize this, but I was testing and found out that if you do that, right here is the drag to host. This allows you to drag MIDI files straight into your sequencer and boom. There's other programs you might know of that can do similar things. What's really cool with this is that whatever the velocities were, see how they're blue? Okay. If I go over here and I change velocity to be maxed out, you know, it's really hot and loud. Okay. If I now take this and drag this MIDI file into here and look at it down here, they're all max velocities. So what that means is that it's actually able to modify the velocity information of MIDI files, which is really cool. So you could drag this over as a soft one, then drag it over as a hard one, um, do that kind of stuff with it. Also, there's those buttons right here for half time and double time. Let's slow it down a little bit. It's kind of fast. It's like 125. And if I'm playing it, It's, it's able to do that. And if you put it to double time and you drag this into your MIDI file, boom, it's a half time length, twice as fast MIDI file that you're playing with. It's awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, so let's do the automating. Watch this. So the automation, I have set up the low note, high note, and velocity. So I can hit play. Let's have it be kind of soft for the beginning of the song. Just want simple, you know. Don't want the high end stuff. Then for a fill, we want to go up a little bit and back down. Now it's the chorus time, so it's big and full. We want to have the kick drum drop out. Just bring down the low bottom note up. And your song is done. Hit play. Soft velocity. One, two, three, four. Now back to the verse. Okay, so that's awesome. <laughs> it's so cool. It's so cool to be able to do that and just automate it in your sequencer for the note ranges. And it's, you can take really busy patterns and just find the parts that you want to use and either automate to include them later or not. Maybe it's just that you want to build composite. You want to take a whole bunch of different grooves and take pieces of a whole bunch of them. There's 550 grooves to play with to do that. So that's the basic gist. There's also the next and the previous buttons. And we're, we tried to automate these. And they're just unreliable, so we're not automating them. But you can do this and be recording it as audio, right? So you could have... It's really cool to. This is why the multiple kicks and snares and stuff are really fun. So you can change between them and it keeps on the fly. It doesn't reset them. They'll play from wherever you, if you're in the middle of major two, 
When you change MIDI files, it continues from the middle of major two of the new MIDI file. It's just awesome. Okay, one last thing I wanted to talk about before we finish this is why I'm committed and why I like this concept so much compared to other things that are out. One thing to think about, there's all these loop libraries of audio loops, and some of them are sold inside of contact skins, and they use features uh, like right here where you have the Time Machine Pro. These allow you to speed up and slow down a little bit without it falling apart, but not a lot. The sound, if you go to any of your sample libraries in contact that use loops, go in and just set it to sampler instead of the Time Machine Pro and listen to the difference in the sound quality. It's a staggering difference in sound quality. So what's great with this engine and concept, I'm using high quality audio samples and MIDI files. So there's no loss of sound quality. You can do more manipulation, you can do more processing, and it sounds better. Also, as I showed you in earlier videos, it's easy to go over here to the mapping page and replace the samples that I've made for this map. Just delete them and put your own samples in. They could be from Native Instruments libraries, from other libraries, from other products. They're, it's easy to put them in. One last thing I want to talk about, and that is that the user grooves folder, um, let's take something from here just for the fun of it. Let's copy these guys. Go to user, paste. If I if I, ha I have to close it, so if I close this, and if I reload this, and there's a contact five, stereo. Let's see, I gotta close that, because that's useless. And I go over here and I choose any, any drum kit, doesn't matter which one. If I go to the MIDI groove player now, and I hit user grooves, Whatever MIDI files I've created, boom, boom, boom. They're there. Also, just remember, that's that kick, right? So you can go over here, hit this, hit lock, and now you can play the groove. Make sure I set this to drum, right? Now I can change this that kick. There's one more trick I want to show you. Um, on top of everything else, the, the convolution reverbs that I created, are they have a really unique personality to them because of the way that I process them. They're not just pure, beautiful rooms and stuff. I wanted some personality to them. So they have... One tip if you go up here and turn on the tool wrench, um, this only applies if you own the full version of Contact 5. But you can go to the Send Effects, to this Convolution Reverb, and click right here where it says Presets, and go to Factory, and here's hundreds and hundreds of really cool, because I can't read the little tiny words, um, really cool special effects, cabinets, there's even instruments and crazy stuff like that. There's like the body of guitar and stuff like that. But if you go to like really cool real rooms, They're really nice, awesome quality convolution reverbs. So you don't have to just use the ones that come inside of Mega Macho Drums. You can go over here. You could say to um, digital reverbs, and here they have like all the Lexicon, the 480. <laughs> let's go to the Lexicon 480 to a five second. Let's go to a seven second hall. Just go to the snare, lock it. Oh, I keep doing that. Make sure you're on drum. And turn on punch. You get the idea. So much power. Fun to play with all for creating new grooves that you can real-time manipulate and sound great. So that's Mega Macho Drums. It's on sale till January 5th for $119. So please come to PluginGuru.com 
and check it out. And thank you, as always, for all of your support. And happy holidays and happy new year. Bye-bye.